Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to cover a few things about uh, electric cars today and electricity. And uh, hopefully I get stuff right. It's been quite a few years since I've delved into this stuff, but it uh, used to be my life. Uh, <clears throat> I'm upstairs, the attic in my garage. I've been working on it all through the winter. It used to be a storage place. This was a radio TV repair shop, antennas, gutters. There's still some stuff laying around from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So I'm cleaning stuff out. I got stuff moved around. I got some clutters for the next winter I'll probably do. But uh, I'll give you a tour here. Uh, bandsaw, there's a sander over there. Scrap wood that came with the place. Some signs I picked up. Uh, we've been changing lights in here. There was only two lights when I moved in. And uh, there's still some stuff sort boxes and stuff from years gone by but now it's a wood shop been making workbenches all year long all winter uh, to get rid of some of the winter depression the fan we put that in last year that makes it livable up here finally and uh, the wife's old TV that uh, the remote doesn't work on always but uh, <clears throat> you can see we've got uh, electric run uh, 20 amp wiring and then 15 amp. I've got to change the two plugs over there. They're slotted to look like 20 amp and they shouldn't be, but I ran out of plugs. But uh, workbenches and stuff all around. So what we're going to do, uh, kilowatt. Kilo is a thousand, whether it's memory, anything. And uh, a watt is a rate of energy transfer. And what makes up a watt is voltage, which is the pressure, and amperage, which is your current. You could think of current like a river, and voltage would be, hey, or you know, let's talk about plumbing. Voltage would be how tall is your water tower to deliver that pressure, that electric, into your home. Uh, one other way you can think, if you're uh, relating to regular ice cars, internal combustion. Uh, think of volts as the RPM and amps as your displacement. So you can have a 400 horsepower car with a smaller engine that would take more RPM to get there or a larger engine that doesn't require all the RPM because it's got a lot of strength in the displacement inside the engine. It's got torque. So you can think of amps as torque, displacement, volts as your revolutions per minute RPM. Now, that's not textbook, it's something I made up. So one thing you can see about watts, we're coming down here to the hair dryer. <clears throat> a lot of people know what a 1200 watt hair dryer is. And now a lot of circuits in your house are 120 volts. And down below that, if you take 120 watts, which is your hair dryer power, divide it by your 120 volts, which is coming into most modern homes now, divide those, you get 10 amps. Or if you knew it was a 10 amp device on 120 volts, you would multiply those two and come out with 1200 watts. So, something they've done over the last couple decades, let's see if we can get the light reflecting here. Let's say your house is a 100 amp service, okay? Here we used to get 110 volts, which was 11,000 watts of power. Then it went to 115 volts. At the same amperage, that's 11,500 watts. Now we get 120 volts and sometimes 125. So we're getting 12,000 watts. It's a way to deliver more power to your house without increasing the size of your wires. Now back in the 50s, cars went from 6 volts to 12 volts. That allowed them to use smaller wires, less copper. And, you know, with the 12 volts, your starters turn faster. If you ever heard a 6-volt car starting, it just turns over real slow. Now, a kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts of power 
for a one hour period. And let's say you're looking at a car with a 60 kilowatt hour battery. Mine has 62. If you want to know the cost of charge, go to your electric bill and find out what they charge you per kilowatt hour. Ours is under one nickel and has been for over 50 years. Okay. So we take the size of the battery, say it's 60 kilowatt hours, and multiply it by your electric cost. Mine would be a, at most a nickel. And there's very little loss in transfer. So 60 times a nickel is three dollars. And uh, that would be a dead charge to a full charge, zero to a hundred. Three dollars. So uh, they tell you to charge 20 to 80 percent unless you're taking a trip and then try not to go to a hundred percent if you're going to take a trip try 95 96 because these uh, electric cars have regeneration and you're going to be limiting that if you go to a hundred percent charge so it's a whole different world out there we got a lot of stuff to learn I've been working on regular cars for years uh, there's a whole downstairs working on brakes. i never done major engine work. Uh, I've done simple engine work and outboard motor work and stuff like that. So uh, I'll give you the whole shot. Uh, I do have a gimbal here, but it's clicking, so i got to figure out what I'm doing wrong with that. You can freeze this shot and go over things. And we'll be going uh, into the batteries for electric cars charging distance and recharge rates it's not always the biggest battery in range that's the best thing there's also recharge rates and uh, also uh, your circuits out there for recharging your cars if you're hitting the road there's the tesla circuit which comes with the cars uh, it'll program and tell you how long you're going to be at which station and what percent you're going to be leaving and coming in at. And uh, a better route planner is the one for all other cars. And PlugShare shows you the condition and type of chargers at each station. So I uh, figured I'd give you this and give you a tour of this mess up here. I'm uh, I went stupid and bought a used boat. And this guy, the guy said the seats just need sanded. And I've got like splinters in my hands. I'm trying not to get infected because the wood's like 40 years old. It is rotten. So that's the front seat. And uh, I've got two vertical pieces of wood. One by, one by two on the other side I cut. And uh, that'll strengthen the board and give something for these weird smoker craft seat aluminum to hold in a piece of styrofoam to be tied into. It's the worst seating design I've ever seen. So there's a wife's kayak she used a few times and some pallets I've got to take apart. But uh, let me give you a tour over here, show you all more junk. Uh, that's a beach umbrella from my parents. So you got stuff like this, electronics, uh, there's a pair of, uh, oh, shoot, well, there's like a homemade extension cord here that you would never want to use, but you got spark plugs from an old Ford, uh, the kids, there's a carburetor, that one's mine, the kids found uh, a mirror downstairs from an early 60s Dodge or Plymouth new in the box when they tore out the workbench downstairs. Oh, there they are. Oh. No metal straps, you know, they're climbers. Telephone pole trees. I don't know why I can't think of them right now. I'm actually certified on the goddamn things. I do good on the first day, but I weighed, so I weighed over 200 pounds, which I wish I did now. That it hurt like hell the next day, so. Got a bunch of my stuff and some of their crap left here. All this stuff, windows, 
and all this scrap wood is theirs and there's a well there was another stack I moved everything over here so we're gonna be moving stuff around probably in the winter time some of my son's camping stuff over there but uh, a lot of junk old typewriter that was state-of-the-art in the 90s and uh, I've still got a stand I bought years ago from Harbor Freight I never used and it is like super heavy duty but uh, just a garage full of crap, uh, redwood furniture from the 50s. But uh, yeah, a lot of projects on each one of these benches. One's going to be for soldering. Uh, we're going to have one for grinding and polishing, which we do on motors and, you know, any bolts and stuff. We can put them on the, uh, put them on the grinder with that wire wheel brush. Uh, but yeah, it's all kinds of stuff we're going to be doing different stuff at different stations and got all the plugs and stuff and these lights that i put in a decade ago they were cfl basement lights replaced the old fluorescents which flickered in the cold these things work great we switched them to led then we just bought the led shop lights that are linkable and uh, that covers most we're going to use these and i just started doing that uh, yesterday to fill in the bad spots so I stuck one back there, I stuck one at that bench, and stuck one there that were up above. So the only lights, there's one behind the board there I covered up, and there's one back there by the fan. Those are the only two lights in the place. And this place, like I said, that's one of the TVs left behind. They auctioned it off. I missed the auction because I was actually into that kind of stuff in the 90s. I sold original picture tubes from the 40s from here, traded off other antiques for boat motors and for money. The uh, CRT round picture tubes, they brought good money. You put them in a plastic bag, stick them in a box, use a hole saw to put a couple holes in the box, you fill the box full of expandable foam and you've got a naturally made cushion and they just got to rip stuff apart when they get there and uh, with the bag sealed good they get a safe picture tube sent to them all kinds of old electronics DVD players failed like crazy I've never had a VCR fail me I've only had two VCRs one of them there one in the attic of the house they never went bad on me the one in the house the uh, one of the plugs for input or output broke off and it still worked so uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff here and that's why I bought this board off of uh, Facebook last week so we can cover stuff and any arguments you know if you know what you're talking about but uh, I've had this car uh, I traded in a huge extended van for it and I've got another full size van out front so there was no reason to have two big van fans so I've been wanting something like an electric car or a hybrid car for decades. Uh, we test drove a 2002 Prius and uh, never made it happen. So it's kind of exciting. I'm old and I said, you know what? I wanted a new car. Uh, we haven't been using the van. The family didn't gather to fill that huge puppy up. And uh, we didn't adopt any Amish families to fill it up. So mostly I was in that extended van by myself, and uh, uh, it did fit a 14-foot kayak right up the middle. <laughs> so I got this car, and I figured, hey, electric, I'm old. I want to try something different, and it's kind of exciting. There are questions, though, and I've got them just like you got them. But uh, I hope this helps explain things. So uh, electric is just math. I love math. So remember, if you go through your house and it gives you the amps or the watts on the back, and you know the power coming in is mostly 120 now, you can do the math to figure out the amperage or wattage, whatever they don't give you, by dividing or multiplying. Uh, you remember the movie, Mr. Mom, where he talked about 220, 221. That means his single service outlet was 110 volts back then. I remember when it went to 115, 
and now it's 120. And when I was measuring with my uh, through line amp meter, when I first got my electric car, I only did the uh, trickle level three charge through the amp meter I bought off of uh, Amazon. What I did, you actually enter in how much you're paying for electric and it's in cents. So it was like 4.92 cents. You plug it into the wall. It only required a 15 amp uh, plug. And I, what I did is I upgraded the 20 amp downstairs here and in the other garage. Whatever they ask for, I do more kind of overkill. And then it tells you it's taken so many kilowatt hours to do a full charge. And then it gives you how many pennies it was. Uh, the amazing thing was is I bought an electric lawnmower from Walmart and I bought it to do the hill out front on a rope. I uh, used to do it lateral. It's a real steep short hill and then you know I get heavy, get older, I don't you know, and I start going up and down. So I got tired of that and now it's on a rope and a battery mower weighed less and a cheap battery mower was even better. And the darn thing's got a handle on it cheap rope from Walmart, rope it up and down the hill last year. So I used that amp meter to test the battery recharge on the Hart lawnmower from Walmart. It came out to 0.72 of one penny. Less than one penny from a dead to a full battery. And it probably cuts, I don't know, quarter acre? Uh, I did make a video on that, I believe. And, uh, one of the greatest things was a uh, lawn boy had two stroke lawnmowers. The oil's mixed in with the gas, so when you did a hill, you didn't have to rely on the sump oil to get in your four stroke motor and lubricate it around. The oil was mixed into the gas, so lawn boy two stroke mowers were great for doing hills. Well, now battery mowers are like ideal, plus they're lighter, they don't smoke. And you don't have that goddamn offset wheel that just plows into a hill. You know, I don't know why Lawn Boy did it. Lawn Boy actually comes from Everroot, I do believe. So, uh, we're going to go through and explore some stuff. And I'll probably recover some stuff later on. That's what the board's for. So, like and subscribe. Share this with your friends. You can comment down below. Uh, this old veteran suffered for 10 for over a decade of seizures and stuff so hopefully my brain is working and it's not working anywhere near what it used to but uh, this is going to give you some things to think about so be safe out there if you got an electric car use plug share let everybody know the condition of that charger if you would so be safe out there and we'll be covering some more stuff in the future take care